Hi, Dennis Ward here again at Hofa College, and today we've got another reaction slash analysis video. Just a quick reminder to our Hofa College students, we have lots of reaction videos online on our online campus that we're not allowed to show on YouTube, so please check it out. So once again, this next song that I'm going to be reviewing, I don't know what it is. They've set it up here on the computer. I have a notepad here with uh, information I might need. So let's see what's going on here. The song is Genesis Mama from the self-entitled album Genesis 1983, uh, produced by Genesis and Hugh Padham. It was produced and mixed at the farm, and there's no other relative information that I can give you, but um, it's a good start, so let's go and see what we got here. Just gotta point out, this was like the beginning of lo-fi stuff. For, for some people that don't know the story uh, behind some of the recordings they did, this was done on a, uh, I think a Lindrum and it was um, reamped in like a, a guitar amp or something like that and you know, you put a mic in front of it to get this lo-fi sound. So this was like uh, the very beginnings of, of this lo-fi stuff. The great stuff about lo-fi is everything hi-fi sounds very big in comparison. So it was a great tool for dynamics. Cool ghosty sounds. Very cool. All right, something I got to point out now. This is like a, an engineer's kind of a nightmare. It probably doesn't even matter, but um, if you hear the sibilances in his voice, the S is the sh, they're like really, really loud. These days, uh, you know, people would ask you, why don't you just put a DS on that because they're included in every stupid DAW and don't cost anything. And uh, they work quite well in the digital domain. And here, I don't know if they didn't care, if there was a reason for it. I usually don't think it matters. However, saying that is something I, I watch out for a lot when I mix. And the first thing I realized just now after listening was, wow, there's lots of sibilances. But this was an obvious hit and it didn't matter. There's a neat kind of a chorus effect on the vocal. But he was renowned for his reverbs and his intense bathroom kind of vocal sounds. There's like chorus, a little quick echo, reverb. Love that left place guitar, just a uh, real descent and warm. That cool reamp loop or sequence. In a minute, you'll see why this lo fi stuff works so well. But if you could hear an I, ah, you can totally tell how much modulation is happening in the vocals, like a chorus or something, that effect. I also like the intensity of the reverb that's uh, is coming in and out. It sounds like it might be put in a group where the compressor is after the vocal and the reverb to make this intensity. Don't know, maybe it's just pushed to tape like crazy, but it sounds real cool. <laughs> I 
I don't want to stop too much, but I have to because I'm reminded of a lot of stuff. First of all, that laugh, I don't know if uh, a lot of people knew that, but that was inspired by uh, Grandmaster Flash, um, a rap song in the 80s where they also did this kind of laugh, and it's, uh, it's funny that he would use it too. Um, but I want to point it out as well, uh, I actually uh, recorded this song as well. I covered, uh, well, I didn't cover, the band I recorded, Anger from Brazil, had um, covered this song, and we tried to do things differently in the sense of that we wanted to keep the spirit. We, we tried to copy a lot of things, even the vocal effects and the style and everything. But all of the percussion we, were, we did with uh, Brazilian percussion. Um, tried to keep it really traditional using per percussion grooves and sequences that were, you know, very well known to th that style. And, um, yeah, we tried to get some of this lo-fi stuff going and realize how much harder it is than it seems. At the time, I didn't know that they reamp stuff, because if I did, I would have probably tried that too. But in any case, great song. <laughs> <laughs> Might be reamped too, I don't know. Little subtle placement of little licks, I love that stuff. Big keyboard change. The first bass notes are coming in. The vocal is almost hard to hear, but therefore very present. I wouldn't do it that way today, I think, but uh, I respect their choice. Full wide keyboard. So now comes the final dynamic. The trademark. Yeah. Now, that was, of course, for all the fans of songs like um, you know, quite a few Genesis songs. We had this gated reverb effect on the drums. And for years, I was trying to copy that. For years, I wanted to know how that was done. And I read things about this uh, um, desk compression and uh, um, studio monitor compression or whatever. And I never could get it. And when I mixed this song back, back in 2006, I think it was, uh, the cover version, I came to a point where I realized that just sounds like noise to me. It's not reverb, it was noise. So I actually just took a noise generator, turned it on and let the gate, I put a gate on it and I let the kick, snare and tom just trigger that, put a small room on it as well. And I thought I got a pretty damn similar effect. To get this extreme gated effect, I tried many things in the mixing of the song for Angra. First, I was trying to do the obvious. I have this room, a stereo track that is, you know, it sounds like this. And I have, of course, my dry tracks that sound like that. And together, they would sound like that. And obviously, that only sounds like a drum kit with a bit of room on it, nothing special. So the first thing I did was I distorted the rooms a bit. I did not have this plug-in back then. I did it probably somehow by just turning up the gain on the desk. But then I put a gate on it that is being triggered by the kick, snare, and toms individually via sidechain. Okay? There's a sidechain active, and all the single hits are opening the gate. So this is what I got. Without, with, obviously I was a lot closer to the point, but I was not happy. I still was not getting the massiveness that I was missing and the aggressivity that I was missing, like in Phil's ear. So I pulled out an old sampler. I think it was the Akai... S1000, if I remember correctly, and it has a tone generator on it where you can make sine waves and uh, noises like white noise, pink noise, whatever noise, 
So I tried to copy this here in Cubase by using a um, pink noise generator. And that would sound just like this. Like noise. I chose that one because it has a tilt. There's not much going on on the top frequencies, more on the bottom. I wanted to round off the frequencies a bit, so I cut some very deep lows and uh, very high highs and turned up the high mids a bit, which makes it sound like this. Then I wanted to get it a little bit wider, so I used some kind of small gated room that really doesn't make a large difference when you hear it, but... Um, it gets a little bit wider. So I got more spread, right? And then I put a little bit of distortion on that too. That does this. It just got it a bit grittier. And that was all. And then finally, I have a gate on this. And this gate is being triggered as the room by the individual drums, so that when I play a groove, it sounds like this. And that's how I achieved my Genesis drum sound. All right, let's continue. From lo-fi to hi-fi, just like that. This guy started the whole gated thing. It was a revolution then. Bass is so subtle underneath too. Just playing what it has to, not a lick more. Amazing dynamics, just amazing dynamics. And like every good song in the 80s, we ended with a guitar solo. It's quiet, but it's it's serving its purpose. It's got this neat effect on it, it's far away, it's just making drama. Great, great stuff. Yeah, brings back memories, it does. Great song, great song. That was fun to hear again after all these years, actually. Very, very nice. Okay, that's that. Thank you again for watching this video. We really enjoy doing these analysis slash reaction videos or the other way around, however you want to put it. I like picking things out of the mix. I've, I've always been uh, into trying to figure stuff out or um, put it this way, even if I didn't figure out what I was trying to copy, the, the road getting there taught me lots of things and it brought me to new ideas. So I'm always big on trying to play around with stuff like this when possible. So we hope that you guys check us out again. Please visit us at hofa-college.com. Until next time, take care. We'll see you around.